this is a essay or this is a letter that um, Hubert Harrison wrote to Mrs. Frances Reynolds Kaiser on May 20th, 1908. This is from his personal diary, and I'm reading from a book entitled uh, A Hubert Harrison Reader, edited and introduction and notes by Jeffrey B. Perry. It was um, printed by Wesleyan University Press in Middletown, Connecticut. I want to give a plug for this book. It's an excellent book. Uh, it has various uh, ideas that Mr. Harrison uh, had during his lifetime, from socialism to free thought to um, criticisms uh, and different things, different essays that he wrote. And I'm going to read, and I'm going to break this up into multiple parts. Um, and this is from the section on free thought. And I just want to read this, and this is part one uh, in, the, in dealing with free thought. In his first decade in the United States, Harrison was attracted to the free thought movement. Free thinkers sought to approach social issues with scientific methodology and thought that was freed from the dogmas and principles of religion. As explained in Free Thought Journal, in the Free Thought Journal, uh, the Truth Seeker, they prided themselves on fearless examination of both sides of issues and stood in support of free inquiry, free publicity of ideas, and free discussion of convictions. Though the movement had, was several hundred years old, it experienced its most rapid growth in the 19th century in wake of Charles Darwin's work on evolution. Free thought attracted many prominent followers, including suffragists Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton, birth control advocate Margaret Sanger, orator Robert G. Ingersoll, anti-slavery editor Horace Greeley, Union Army Colonel and writer Thomas Wentworth Higginson, attorney Clarence Darrow, socialist Eugene V. Debs, authors Samuel L. Clemens, also known as Mark Twain, Moncure D. Conway, and Hubert Spencer. The most, uh, the popular European scientists. Uh, and the popular European scientist Ernest Hegel. Many black leaders and writers of the early 20th century, in addition to Harrison, were influenced by free thought or atheism. These included labor activists and socialists A. Philip Randolph and Chandler Owen, writers uh, J. A. Rogers and George S. Schuyler, poet Claude McKay and Walter Everett Hawkins and activists Cyril B. Briggs, Richard B. Moore, and Rothschild Francis. W. E. B. Du Bois, according to his biographer David Levering Lewis, was agnostic and anti clerical. And so, and this is a letter uh, that he wrote again to. Uh, Miss Frances Reynold Kaiser, and this is from his personal diary um, on May 20th, 1908. You may not have known that seven years ago I divorced myself from orthodoxy and institutional Christianity. You are well enough acquainted with both literature and life to know that this is neither a proof of depravity nor of indifference not in minds like mine at any rate, or contraire. The complete severance was not effected at once. In the course of my reading, I came across Paine's Age of Reason, the religion of deism, as advocated by Rousseau, Voltaire, and Vonnet, when considered intellectually as a barren style hybrid. If my untried faith had first encountered the purely intellectual non 
which deism presented, it would have survived. But pain, the least learned of the 18th century deistic writers, presented certain rationalistic results which bore their own proof on their face. Certain forms of reductio absurdum were to me then irresistible. Conviction quick as Lightman did his dynamite work. Did it hurt? Already, I said already, I was not one of those who did not care. I suffered. Oh, how my poor wounded soul cried out in agony. I saw the whole fabric of thought and feeling crumbling at its very foundations. And in those first few fearful weeks of stern reaction, I could not console myself as so many have done with the husk of superior braggadocio. I began with feverish anxiety to pick up, well, to pick from the ruins those pieces that would serve for the building of another fabric which had gone, which had gone was, uh, what was gone was the authenticity of the Bible. That which I had been taught was the word of God. For my God was the Bible God, the Jehovah of Hebrew tradition, plus the tribune God fused from four centuries of Persian, Babylonian, and Hindu teaching, and the Alexandrian cobwebs of Porphyry, Plotinus, and Neoplatonus. So when my Bible went my God went also. But I had to get one to worship. And I proceeded to build me a God of what was left. Do you remember Pope's universal prayer? This is Alexander Pope. Father of all in every age, in every clime adored, by saint, by savage, and by sage, Jehovah, Jove, O Lord. And I'm going to end this right here, and then I'm going to start the next section.